church. Hopefully you're tuning in uh, from your home as well or abroad, wherever you might be. We have several people that are, that are traveling this week. Uh, but just wanted to reach out to you uh, tonight. Uh, God is so good. Our family is all well. Uh, COVID has visited the Thornton household. And, uh, we've had a couple positive tests. And so we're quarantining. And some of you have been through that already, ahead of us in that, I guess. But uh, some have asked, and I'll just let you know that all of our family is well. Uh, the last week or so, uh, we've had some bouts with fever and uh, different things. Usually a day or two, feel lethargic, uh, you know, a little sore, almost like flu symptoms is what it's been for us. Uh, but everybody's... Uh, on the mend, it seems, and we're doing well. Of course, we are uh, quarantining. I think I have to quarantine till the 7th of October. So um, we'll be coming to you online. Uh, of course, this is a Wednesday night segments uh, we call Seeds. And I really want to visit, uh, again, the thought maybe that we shared on Sunday from Romans, the 15th chapter. But I just want to say greetings to everyone. We love you. These are... Difficult, crazy times, Some for some very frustrating times. I understand that. Uh, but at the same time, I know that God has this. And uh, there's some good things that are coming out of that. And so we're looking on the positive. We choose. We choose to look at the positive things that are uh, taking place in the midst of all of this. And so I want to go to the word of the Lord uh, this evening. I think it's good uh, to stay in the word of God. And uh, we really focused on the characteristics and traits of God on Sunday. And uh, but before I get into the Word, let me just uh, share a little bit of our schedule uh, for this week. I know it's on Facebook and uh, on our website there. You can uh, catch up on what's going on around Harvest. Uh, but let me do say that, uh, of course, tonight we're not having uh, services just because we've had several cases. And I feel like we just need to dial back um, for this next week or so. And so uh, we're going back to online presently. Uh, there was, uh, there will be no senior service tomorrow, tomorrow morning. And so we've uh, tabled that. I don't like the word canceled, but we have tabled that till next month. Uh, men's prayer, uh, we feel like we can social distance. And for those that are well and don't have fevers, uh, we invite you to come participate in, in men's prayer. Men aren't always to pray. And so uh, we've been doing that as we navigate this. And so it really is a crucial time that the church ought to be praying and praying together corporately. And so we can practice uh, social distancing and come together, men's prayer. Uh, invite you to do that this Saturday at 630. Sunday uh, presently is still tentative, uh, whether it'll just be simply online or if we will uh, convene and have church. Myself and my family will not be there this Sunday uh, just because we are, uh, we'll be under quarantine till the middle of next week. And so uh, be praying for us. We're praying for you. Uh, we will get the word out on Sunday what's taking place, but uh, there will be something, uh, whether it's, it's a, a live service or something that you can participate online. I want to say a great big thank you uh, to just our team that has been just working diligently, trying to keep us up to date. Uh, I, I want to say first, thank you to Brother David Dimock, just on property, uh, just trying to help us in this season and just many various capacities. And uh, I just I want to just give a big shout out to Brother David and, of course, his family, uh, just a great asset to the Harvest, Harvest Church and uh, ministry. And appreciate all that he does with music and, and just the daily affairs of the job. We've had a construction project going on during all of this and uh, just a lot of different things and just maintaining property while there's just been a lot of a lot of motion and movement going on. And then I also want to say a great big thank you to uh, the Rogers family, Matt and Elisa, and their whole crew. Uh, they just really have uh, assimilated to the need of, of the moment, and that is just really up in our game and our media presence, and uh, I know they just spent a lot of hours, uh, tireless hours, just working on uh, what we're presenting, 
And so I want to just say thank you to the Rogers. And then also, last but not least, my own family, uh, Joanne and uh, Celine, especially in the office and just uh, the daily cares of the church, helping us there. Uh, Celine with a lot of our media presence as well. I just want to say a great big thank you to her. It's just been tremendous just what uh, these these people that I mentioned have done pulling together during this COVID crisis and helping us as a church to try to get the word out there and communicate. So I say thank you to all of these, and, and God bless you so much. Uh, I want to get to the word of the Lord and, and just uh, share a, a passage of scripture with you that I shared Sunday. Uh, this passage to me, and I, I would pray that you would open your Bibles and look at it with me uh, and really uh, consider it, because it's something that I think that's very needful and necessary for all of us. Paul said, in Romans 15 and 4, for whatsoever things were written aforetime. And of course, we know that uh, he's speaking about the Word of God. Uh, perhaps Paul is in his frame and time and, and generation, maybe is looking more at the, the Pentateuch and the Old Testament, the works of the prophets. Uh, but we, looking at what Paul is saying, is considering not only the Old Testament, but the New Testament as well, uh, the Bible, the complete entire canon, Paul said, uh, for whatsoever things were written aforetime, were written uh, for our learning, uh, that we, I love these words, that we through patience and comfort of the scripture might have hope. As I began to consider that passage again these last couple of weeks, uh, the word of God is such a, an inspiration to us, a blessing to us. Uh, it's a constant standard for us in times like these that we, through the Scripture and learning of the Word of God, uh, we find comfort and we might have hope uh, through the Scripture because we can look back uh, to what God has done before. We can look back to the stories and the living, living epistles of the past uh, and they tell us, they showcase for us uh, the goodness of God and how that God can bring us through, uh, how that God can uh, cause victory to transpire for his people, uh, how that God can heal our lands, uh, how that God can minister uh, in a difficult situation, uh, how that he provides for us uh, when it seems like uh, that we're in just a, a very tough spot. And so I, I love that passage. I, I would pray that you would reflect upon it Whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning so that we would know, that we would have this confidence, uh, that we would have understanding, that we, through patience and comfort of the Scripture, it's the Word of God that's our resource, not just what men are saying, uh, not the opinions of the day, but what's the Word of God declare unto us? And it's that. It's that which we, which we find. It's that which, which we learn uh, that gives us uh, our blessed hope. And so I'm not going to be very long here uh, today, but I do want to just reflect on maybe some things that we talked on, talked about on Sunday. And that is, when I begin to consider this, I see the consistency of God. Uh, I, I see how that He's faithful. Uh, we we shared the, the the passage from the the prophet that He says, "I, I do not change." Uh, we shared the passage from Paul's writings in Hebrews where it says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so when I look back at the old, old Scripture, or the Old Testament, when I look at the New Testament canon, uh, I, I see this consistency of God. I learn of Him, uh, hallelujah, that He's the same. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. And so as I begin to consider that, uh, I began to just sort of compile a list of things that as we look through the scripture, uh, we see consistent of God's nature, uh, his, his traits, his characteristics, amen. Looking uh, to that which was written aforetime for our learning. Uh, when we look, looking for scriptures for comfort and hope. But when we look, we discover uh, the consistency of God. Uh, we, amen, we, the unchanging characteristics of God and uh, the continued traits of God. So what are these? Well, uh, 
we shared this on Sunday, and if you joined us online or if you was there uh, in attendance, had a good crowd Sunday, uh, I'll, I'll just share how that we've been about half uh, of what we were pre-COVID, uh, but our numbers have been steadily climbing back. And of course, this week we sort of had a flare up, and so uh, I don't know, it's, it's back, to, back to the drawing board. Uh, but uh, we're confident that God knows what he's doing, uh, not only abroad in our world, our nation, but with us personally as a church and as a local congregation. Uh, but as we shared with the church on Sunday and with you that joined us online, uh, there's at least five traits that, uh, and, and you, could, you could explore this and, and you could learn and, and look at the passages of scripture and maybe add to this list that I would present today and would present on Sunday I'm just going to do sort of a, uh, uh, an overview of that again, maybe a little refresher. I, I think it's just still in my mind, in my spirit. Uh, but just some things that I, uh, I see in the Old Testament and that I see in the New and that I know that we are witnessing even ourselves by our own experience. The title, of course, Sunday was the Old and the New and the Now, and that's referencing uh, what we can see as we look to the scripture for our hope, uh, for our learning, what we see. And in the Old Testament, amen, we see it. In the New Testament, we see it. And then we see it again uh, in our own experience. And so in the now. And so what is that? That consistency of God, that sameness, that characteristic of his trait. And so I, I want to just share these five uh, things and maybe elaborate on them a little more today. And just talk to us. First of all, number one, and this goes all the way back to the Genesis. Uh, this goes back to uh, the Lord talking to Adam and Eve in the cool of the day. Uh, this goes back to uh, Abraham being a friend of God. Uh, you think about Moses uh, meeting uh, God upon the mount. Uh, just You could just go on and on through the old and then into the new where uh, he robed himself in flesh and came and dwelt among us. But uh, God wants communion. Uh, he wants fellowship with us. Uh, he wants to spend time with us. I think that is a constant, consistent characteristic of God that we see in the Old Testament, that we see in the New Testament. And that we must realize today that this is still a passion of heaven. The motivation of God is that he wants to spend time in fellowship uh, with us. Uh, he said he'll never leave us or forsake us. He's a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. Uh, I believe that God wants time and fellowship uh, with his people. Uh, the cre created with the creator, the creator with the created. Uh, the potter hath power over the clay and God wants time with that which he has created. Uh, I do want to just say, and as I pass, by that, that trait and characteristic of God that I see in the old and I see in the new and I feel the pull, the tug, even present tense in the now. Uh, this week, starting Sunday, uh, will be a, a week of prayer and fasting. Uh, that's not just something that we just throw on the schedule, uh, but it's something that we realize that uh, we, we want to we we tap into this characteristic of God, this fellowship, this relationship this communion that he desires to have with his people. And one of the best ways to do that is spending time with him uh, in devotion, uh, in prayer. Even right now, we're talking about the word of God, but as you would find a place and just get along with him and let God talk with you and, and uh, you talk with him, uh, that's, that's something that uh, is ancient. It's an ancient trait of the almighty God. If you go back to the garden in the beginning of humanity, God was wanting relationship uh, with his own. Uh, if you go to the New Testament and he came, he walked upon the shores of the Sea of Galilee uh, and he, he, he talked to men. He said, come and I'll make you a fisher of men. Uh, he called his disciples. Uh, he, he, he wanted communion with us. If you look at the Holy Ghost being poured out on the day of Pentecost, it's God's desire, it's his nature uh, to have fellowship with uh, his creation. And so that's something that uh, I, I want to be privy of. I want to learn that. I want to know that. And that comforts my heart today. It gives me hope 
uh, that we're not here by ourselves, brothers and sisters. Harvest, we're not uh, in this alone, uh, but God wants to travel with us. He wants communion and fellowship with us. And so I would encourage you uh, to spend time in growing that relationship and learning uh, this beautiful trait of our creator, the almighty God. Uh, I talked on Sunday. The second point is that and this is just a list that I just sort of put together. And again, there are so many other things that we could talk about when you look to the Old Testament canon and the new, and even in your own experience, these consistent traits of God that we find. But I, I, I talked and ex expounded upon the need for importunity. Uh, and again, I, I stated this Sunday, but I don't know the full reason of this detail of God or of this um, necessary trait of God or that this, this it's consistent that we find in him. But it seems like that God desires us to just do it again. Uh, not many times, not and God can work in a moment. Uh, God can work in singular situations. Uh, but it just seems in God's economy that many times he wants us to knock on the door again he wants us to walk around Jericho again. He wants Naaman the leper to dip again. Uh, he wants the servant to the prophet to go out and just look again and see what you see. Uh, pray again, amen. Fast again, read your Bible again. Share your testimony one more time. It just seems um, that God desires us to do it again. Um, you can tie that to the need of faithfulness, that a man be found faithful. Uh, but I, I just think there's something, I think it's something that we need to learn of God because so often we can tire, uh, it can become mundane, uh, just simply our faithfulness to the things of God, whether it's reading our Bibles, whether it's time spent in prayer, whether it's time in fellowship or going to church, uh, whether it's in our giving, uh, and you could just share a whole list of things that mark our devotion to God. It seems like that in God's economy, he just wants us to do it again. And I, I think this is comforting and gives us hope. Uh, he's not trying to wear us out, uh, but he just wants us to be found faithful. Uh, those are going to be the words to those that enter in on that day, enter in thou good and faithful servant. And so it's in his gospels that he shares this need uh, for importunity uh, that if you'll just keep on knocking, uh, the master of the house will get up and will respond. And so I, I, I just, in this time, in this season, uh, I, I sense for all of us uh, our weariness, our, our tiredness of, uh, of the day, of what's going on with, uh, again, whether it's politics or pandemic. Uh, but I would just say, let's, let's do it again. Let's be faithful again. Let's, let's pray again. Let's go to the word again. Let's have hope again. Let's thank the Lord again. Let's praise him again. And uh, I think God, amen, is blessed in that. And that's just a part of who he is. And so we can debate that. We can uh, argue that. I don't know, but I think there's just something to the power of opportunity and just that faithfulness to the things of God. And uh, he's coming back for a people that have made themselves ready and that have just been willing uh, day in and day out just to do it again, uh, to love God with all our hearts again, uh, to repent again, uh, to just give ourselves completely and wholly to the Lord again. And maybe you're watching this and maybe uh, you've grown weary or tired. I would just say get back up again. Uh, talk to the Lord again and allow him to speak to your heart fresh and anew again today. Uh, that's just something that I see in God when I read, whether it's the Old Testament or the New Testament, or I see in this present experience of our own, uh, there's something to importunity. And then God is long-suffering with us, uh, not will that any should perish. Again, you see this throughout uh, the biblical text, and I won't take long to belabor that, uh, that point. Uh, because I think we realize that and we're thankful for that. Uh, we elaborated on that quite a bit on Sunday, but I'm thankful that uh, he hasn't changed and that God is long-suffering.
God will that any uh, should perish. And uh, 2020, uh, God, I believe, is still being patient uh, with his people. Uh, he's being patient with this world and with humanity. And uh, that's one of the great attributes of our God that we find in the old and we find in the new and we find in the present tense. Amen. Uh, and so I really wanted to, I, I, I felt like I sort of rushed Sunday through these last two points. And I'm just going to take just a few minutes here, amen, and, and, and elaborate a little more on these. Of First of all, and of course, it'd be the, the fourth point that God, God provides for us. Uh, and I love what the psalmist says in Psalms 37, 25. He said, I've been young and now I'm old. Yet I've not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Amen. Uh, he is our provider. I just, I just wanted to maybe revisit that again today. Again, it's, it's what I've seen written a fourth time that comforts. It's what gives me hope. Uh, and as God has provided in the Old Testament, as I seen Him, Amen. Provide in the New, uh, we testify and we are living testimonies of his great provision today. Uh, God is providing for us even in these perilous times. Uh, these very well could be uh, the very last days uh, before the coming of the Lord. But I would pray that as his body, we would not have fear, uh, that we would understand even in tumultuous times that God is going to provide and make a way for us. Doesn't mean we won't have storms. Doesn't mean COVID might not visit our house. Uh, it rains on the just and the unjust. But we have this confidence, we have this hope uh, that he is our great provider uh, and he will take care of his own. Uh, it's God that gives, uh, it's God that provides, it's God that sustains, uh, it's God that creates, uh, it, it's God that takes care of us, amen. It was God that caused the meal in the barrel to not waste and the oil in the cruise to not fail. If you study those scriptures of old, you'll find that uh, people people got into a hard place and uh, a difficult scenario, but uh, the miracle uh, was there and God took care of them. It was God that closed the mouth of the lion uh, in the den that Daniel found himself. It was God that provided strength for Samson. It was God that parted the waters and delivered Israel with a mighty hand. I just have this confidence today. I'm comforted in knowing. I have this hope today uh, by looking at the scriptures and what was written aforetime and as I would learn from them uh, that God will provide for us. And so I would uh, share with you today, don't have fear, but have this confidence that God's going to take care of us. There's many, many passages of scripture, but I'll just share James 1.17, every good gift, Every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Amen. And, and finally, I, I want to tell you, and this is really, uh, it really came out of last Saturday morning, men's prayer. Brother Bill Freeman was sharing uh, just a, 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 something that he recollected and remembered about trust. And we were just talking about some of these things, these characteristics of God and he brought up this point about trust, and it really uh, began to feed my mind and my thought as I began to contemplate trust. Because when I think about trust, uh, I often think about the admonition of the word. When I look at the old and I look at the new and I'm learning of the scripture, there's so many passages that talk about trusting in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not Upon thy own understanding, all thy ways acknowledge him. He'll, he'll direct thy path. The psalmist wrote prolifically about trusting in God and trusting in the Lord with all thy might. Uh, but I began to consider uh, when I'm thinking about the characteristics of God, that God doesn't change and that God's the same. And as I began to think about this component of trust, not only are we, are we admonished to trust him, but I am assured and confident that God is trusting us. And I began to consider that. And uh, it, it, uh, it challenged me. When I think of 
Uh, again, you can go back to the relationship of humanity with God from Adam and Eve in the garden throughout the heroes of faith and the old patriarchs and every prophet, every king. Uh, again, you just pick out a character and you see God entrusting them. Uh, God trusted Adam uh, with uh, the duties of the garden, with the, the launch of humanity. Yes, Adam failed uh, in partaking of the fruit and disobeying God, uh, but he had God's trust. Uh, when you see Moses, God trusted Moses to be the great deliverer and leader of Israel out of Egypt land. Uh, don't believe that he, Moses got it all right. You know, uh, he, he, instead of speaking to the rock, he smote it. Uh, sometimes he got weary with the people, but yet God trusted him. God entrusted him to go before the mighty Pharaoh and to challenge him to let his people go. God, God trusted him to lead the children of Israel uh, through the wilderness and to the promised land. And even though Moses never got to inherit it, uh, we find uh, that of scripture. We learn of scripture that God trusted this man by the name of Moses. God trusted Abraham. He was a friend of God, and God trusted him. Uh, I see uh, the call of Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac, and maybe that was God just seeing how far can I check, can I trust Abraham. Uh, but you see him trusting him. Uh, he became the father of faith, and I could go on with characters of Scripture. Uh, I could take it to the New Testament where you know God. Uh, robes himself in flesh and comes and dwells among us. And we find the Christ walking uh, upon the seashore and calling a motley crew of fishermen uh, to become fishers of men. And Christ trusted them, trusted the New Testament church into their hands, trusted them that they would get it right. Uh, that, that to me is, is, is an amazing, amazing commentary when you consider it, uh, that he he trusted the likes of Simon Peter and James and John to further the gospel, uh, to accomplish what he had started to do. And so in the now, uh, that's really where I wanted to talk to us today for just a couple minutes in closing. I believe God is trusting us. Uh, it challenges me because he's trusting us with this present. Uh, he's trusting us, amen, to continue as his church. He's trusting us uh, to represent the Lord Jesus Christ in a day where perhaps he's becoming more difficult to see. He's trusting us during politics and pandemic. He's trusting us to be a praiser in the midst of all that. God trusts us. He trusts us to be a light set upon a hill. He trusts us with his gospel and with his truth. The Lord is trusting you and I. And as I begin to consider that, it's been a while, uh, I would have to propose. It's, it's been, I don't know that I've ever really thought about it in that context. Because when I think of trust, I think that that's something that I, uh, it, it's something necessary for I to do, for me to do and that is to trust in the Lord. But it, it, it moves me and it impacts me to think or to consider that God is trusting me, uh, that he's trusting you, that he's trusting us. He's trusting Harvest today. He's trusting the church. Uh, he told Peter, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He trusts the church today uh, to be at her best, uh, to be on fire, uh, to be a revival flame in an end time hour. And so I will leave you with that today. Uh, I don't know where you're at. I don't know what's all going on in your mind or your spiritual posture, but I want to challenge you with that, understanding that God trusts you today. He trusts you to be his child. He trusts you to be faithful. He trusts you to love him with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. It doesn't mean that we'll always get it right in our humanity. In fact, when I study the scripture, when I look at it to find comfort and hope, uh, I see oftentimes that those that God entrusted uh, 
failed. They came up short. You know, but I love the story of Simon Peter. You know, the Lord trusted him to be his disciple. He trusted him so much that he gave him the keys to the kingdom. And it seemed like when it came, Christ's ministry came to the climax that, that Simon Peter failed. Uh, but he's seen again, amen, after he's risen from the dead. Christ is seen again of Simon. And uh, I believe Simon got it right. I believe that Simon, amen, amen, fulfilled what Christ's trust was in him. He was the spokesman at Pentecost. Historians tell us that he became a, a Christian martyr. Amen. I think he was faithful until the end. That's what I see in Simon Peter. And I hope that that's something that uh, will emulate in us. It's something that uh, we will participate, partake, be a part of, amen, in this last day as God is trusting us uh, with his truth and with his gospel. He's trusting us uh, to be his witness and to be his church. I love each and every one of you. Uh, I pray that this word would, would challenge you today. And uh, just know that God is looking down from heaven. He believes in you. Uh, he trusts you. Amen. And uh, he knows that you're going to do it right. You're going to get it. You're going to get it right. Amen. You're going to be found faithful. And I believe that of you today. So I want to close in prayer. Amen. Forgive my emotion a little bit. This word really just heavy on me today. Uh, I believe God is trusting us with this, with this pandemic. He's trusting us to, to navigate it rightly. And I know there's a lot of opinions and ideas of what the church ought to do, and what, how the church ought to respond, and I, I get all of that. And as I've stated uh, from the very start, I don't know if there's a right or wrong answer because uh, we all have our different feelings of, of what we need to do. Uh, but we want to find what heaven would desire us to be and, and to accomplish. And I know God's trusting us with that. And uh, uh, I, I want to excel. I want to do well uh, with God's trust. Amen. So if you'll join me in prayer, amen, we love each and every one of you. I uh, can't wait to see you and to shake your hand and hug your neck, amen. I, I know we're in a sort of a difficult place, but uh, just know that we love you. Feel free to call the church office at any time if you have a need or if there's something that we can do, pray with you over the phone. That's becoming uh, something that we're doing more and more often. Um, pastoral ministry uh, has sort of shifted and changed. Uh, during this season, uh, but we've been doing a lot of that, just talking and praying with people over the phone. Uh, I don't like that as well. I like to be in person, as I know you as well, but let's pray together that God would direct us in this season, and I pray, God, this word of God would challenge us today. Father, we thank you today for the word of God. I thank you, Lord, for the scripture, God, that was given to us to comfort, given to us, O oh Lord, to provide hope, those things that were written aforetime, God, whether we go back to the Old Testament or we look into the New, the Gospels, and God, the Pauline epistles, and God, all that's written for us, God, for our learning, and God, to provide hope for us. I pray, God, that as we would reflect upon the Scripture, and God, just today, more importantly, upon your characteristic, your trait, God, your nature, and that you're the same, that you do not change, as we look through the Word of God, we find, God, that you're long-suffering to us. Lord. We find, oh God, that you're patient with us. We find, oh God, that you trust us, Lord, today. Lord, I pray, God, just help us, Lord, be comforted by these things. Help us, I pray, God, to find hope in you. God, in you we live and move and have our being. I pray, God, for every member of Harvest. I pray for guests that would be joining us today online, that you would just encourage them by the word of the Lord. and Help us, God, to look to you. And to realize, God, that you're counting on us as your church and as your people. That you're looking to us, God, to be that city set up on a hill. God, that light that's shining forth that men, God, can testify and witness of your good works in us. We give you glory and praise. Bless Harvest Church. I pray, Lord, over those that are sick in body. I pray over those, God, that have had loss, God, even this week. Lord, those that are grieving today, I pray, Lord, that you would just minister strength. And God, let the joy of the Lord be our strength. Bless God, each and every member in particular. We're going to give you the glory and the praise. We thank you for your healing and your touch. And we thank you, Lord, for your great love that you've shed abroad in our hearts today. And we pray peace over each and every one. Bless our nation. God, I pray our country, Lord, in this present time. And we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. 
I will see you soon.